Great. So um, the question was, how do you deal with uh, something like this, where I have uh, audio embedded in the video and a separate audio track, and this is actually just a short component out of this much longer clip. I don't want to export the whole clip because that's multiple gigabytes. I really just want this segment, that's the good cut, and this audio track, which is already in sync. So to do that, um, what you want to do is you actually want to create a separate destination. Here I have one that I've created, but we can just create another one. And basically we're going to create a bundle. We're going to name it. Uh, we're going to call it um, New AV. And then the trick is that you have to keep adding destinations. I mean, this is really weird, but we're going to say export file. And we just want the video, for example. I can rename this in a second. Um, and we can just say do nothing because I don't need to open it. All right. Um, if we go back up here, all right, here we can rename this. We can say video. All right. And then we go back, say add a destination again. Grab another export file. Drop it into here. We can rename it. And we'll say again audio only. And actually, we want waves that we have the original audio effectively. And again, I don't want to do anything when I when I load it out. So this will now give me an audio and video export of the original files. Now, it, so we can close this for right now, and we should have that as one of our shared destinations. New AV. It's actually better than the previous one I created. Um, now this audio or this this video segment still has its audio and this audio segment. So if I play them, um, you won't hear it, but they'll both play together, right? And the whole point is I only want this audio and this video. So to do that, because it's going to actually collapse all this into one stream and then break it apart into a video and an audio segment, um, we can select the audio clip. And normally it's set on video, but we can go up here and in, in, in this. Uh, just this window. I don't know what that is, the <laughs> effects and presets window. And we can just say, I don't want any of the audio from the video segment. Now, in this case, that's the same audio, except that it was recorded on the, the camera preamp, which is really crappy, versus the, uh, the, the recorder preamp. So now I should get the clean audio and the good video, and they're both exactly the same length, and they're synchronized. So even though you get two separate files, we should then be able to import them back in and into a new project or a new library. And, and then they should just drop one on top of each other and, and the, the sync should be just fine. Uh, on top of that, this actually then goes really quick. So I can say, go ahead and export. We'll go new AV. Right. Um, great. It's going to be 330 meg, which is about right. That's what they've been this entire time. And we'll just say go. Uh, we'll call this new outro one just because there's already one there. Um, and this should just go bing bing and be done. So there's the video, and then there's the audio. So great, so now we have these two files, and uh, sure enough, I should be able to, actually here, let me go back to this. Um, I'm gonna create a new event. We'll call it a uh, new event. So original. Um, and then we'll go ahead and uh, import some material. And grab off of, uh, I think I put it here. Yeah, here are these two. Import both of those. Uh, I'm going to copy into my library. I'm going to create optimized media off of them, do all the other sorts of things. And we're going to add to the new event. And as we go say import, it shouldn't take it all that long because it's just basically moving it from one spot to another on the disk, but uh, still take it a second. And then it should start doing its um, analysis and all that kind of stuff on these. Uh, and then again, we should be able to say, okay, we've got a new new project, has nothing in it. So if I drop the video, which has some audio in it for some reason, uh, and hopefully the audio has two audio tracks. I don't know why that guy actually has any, it should have been video only, but anyway, so we can turn this off. Um, Actually, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe this is already there, but I would make it dual mono first off because there are actually the two separate tracks. And the same thing for this audio, we can say rather than stereo, I want this it's actually dual mono. 
and I'm assuming we can turn that off and now we'll actually have um, in the video synchronized the, the audio so I didn't realize it was doing that too um, which is why I said video only but anyway uh, but anyway th these two should actually be in sync so if I leave that on and actually go and turn this one off um, they should play fine and again you won't hear this because I don't have the audio piped into the recording but uh, So in, for me, it's in sync. Anyway, so this is this is the basic concept of doing this export and re-import, and at least then you just have the file you need to work with rather than 40 gigabytes of crap. Um, so this is actually really cool. This is this is going to work well. At the same time, if I then said export this to frame, right? So if I just said go ahead and push this up to frame um, as source, then this this collapsed video and audio segment will still be the cleaner audio. So we could also use frame as our sharing source this way. Um, at, least, at least this way it's just the green screen video and the good clean audio or at least as clean as we can make it audio and so that should should be functional. So anyway, um, well maybe that's useful. Uh, I think the only reason you'd really pull the audio out is if you want to throw it through Audacity um, and that's so now we know how to do that uh, and that's my recording.